Hey guys, this is Garv. Welcome back to my channel, TechFit. And today we are looking at how to use SQL. Again, if you're working in any company as a data scientist or as an analyst, SQL is something that is widely used. Again, as you see in a lot of different job specs as well, SQL is one of the required skills that you need to have if you're working in this field because it's for uh, basically extracting the data from the database. Again, even if you're using Python or if you're using R, you still use SQL to extract the data within your code as well. So it's really good to have that basic understanding on how to use SQL starting from from the beginner level. So again, if you don't really know anything about SQL, this is a video to start with because we'll be covering the basics first and then moving upwards towards using how to use joins. And then I'll be covering a lot of different use cases. I'll stay till the end because in the end, I'll be covering three different types of use cases, which are more higher level use cases, things that you would be doing in Python or R, but you can actually sometimes do it within SQL itself. So I'll be covering those topics as well. So stay tuned till the end and let's begin coding. Starting with what is SQL, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. A query language is a kind of programming language that's designed to facilitate retrieving specific information from databases. And that's exactly what SQL does. To simplify it, SQL is language of databases. SQL basically matters most because most of the companies store their data in databases and while there are many type of databases like uh, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, PL SQL, most of them speak SQL. So once you have got SQL basics under your belt, you'll be able to work with any of them. So first thing first, like, I mean, like we have to kind of like clear the theory first and look at first which are the types of statements that you have in SQL. So I think that the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to kind of like cover a bit of theory where like I'm just going to kind of like scroll over all of these terms that, and what they exactly tends to do and a small bit of difference. I mean, like which you can go through yourself, but I think it would be good to kind of like have some niche understanding of the code itself and then to actually begin with some sort of really basic examples and and use them first and then kind of like gradually build upon that. So the first thing is, uh, what type of statements are there in SQL? So we're going to cover first of all, which is your DDLs. So DDL is your data definition language. Within that, you have certain types of statements, like say, for an example, the first one, which is a really key is create statement where you're creating the table itself. Then you have your move down line, which is your alter. You're altering the, the values in the table or you're altering the whole table. Then moving down, you have drop, which means if you're created some table and you want to drop that table, you can just uh, select that statement. You, you, you can easily drop that table and all the data that exists in that table. Then you have truncate, which is a slightly different to drop where you're not really dropping the table itself. You're just basically deleting the data. So that's what truncate is. So truncate means you actually take out all the data, but you're, you're still leaving the integrity of the table. You're not really touching anything else except the data. Then finally, you have your rename, which is again, you're renaming either the name of the columns or you're re renaming the table name itself. So that's kind of like you have your all types of statements within your DDL. Then you have another type of statements, which is your DML, which is data markup language. Again, within data markup language, you have your uh, select statement, which is again, the key one, which you would be majorly using all the time because you're selecting that data because you want to view that data in your console window. That's why you will be uh, using select to bring the data out of the tables to actually view what is exactly there in those tables. Next is your insert, where you're inserting the value in the rows. And then you have similar where you have update, where you're updating the values in the table. So if you're say for example if I inserted something you maybe you want to add on to that value you have another new column in that or you want to just change the value within one of the columns so where you'll be using update statement to update the values in the table then finally you have delete where you just delete the, the certain value within that table now there's a difference between truncate and delete where truncate you can't really roll back if you deleted something that's just gone forever but again if you delete something you can actually roll back usually whenever you're using PL SQL or SQL server itself you do or MySQL as well you do have that values where you can, if you delete something with a delete statement, you can actually roll back those values. So you don't really uh, delete it forever, basically. But if you do truncate, that means you have to delete it forever. Uh, that's why truncate tends to be slightly faster in comparison to delete statement, because delete statement usually works well with using where clause, where you say, if the name is a uh, certain name, say name A, and uh, delete only the values for name A. So you're just selecting specific values and you're deleting them. Other than that, you do have different types of statements like DCL, which is data control language. You have TCL, which is transactional control language. Now you won't be really using it as a data scientist because this is something that 
admin user would be uh, working on and you working as a data scientist or a data analyst you won't be really touching up on these type of language again I have been working in this field almost a decade but I haven't really ever used uh, DCL or TCL so it's mainly you would be working with DDL or DML now again we'll do cover a lot of use cases in the end which is kind of like high-end use cases so if you think you are uh, at a certain level where you know all this beginner uh, kind of like stuff where how to work on these statements in the end we will be working on as big use cases as well where we are doing a couple of things within the same code so i hope you enjoy this video further and we'll kind of like start begin on uh, kind of exploring more on certain examples so starting with first uh, we have create table within create table as you can see i'm creating a table supplier and within that table i'm actually creating uh, within my round brackets i'm actually putting the values uh, which is supplier id and then i have my supplier name and again as you can see for supplier id i have selected the type of data that exists in the table is numeric which means it's an integer value and i'm actually giving a certain uh, length to that data type which is 10 and I'm just saying not null. So basically ID is something that I don't want anyone to add into the row as a row in the table and give the value as null. So I want them to put some value against the ID. Then you have your supplier name where I have said varchar2 again because I'm using PL SQL. So yeah, PL SQL you'll be using varchar2 because you're better than using varchars. And then I'm just giving the values contact name would be varchar250 again and then i've actually just created these three more columns which is supply date which is again a date format of the column and i have state which is varchar2 uh, customer app which is varchar2 then again I'm, what i'm trying to build is my primary key now just kind of like a basic understanding of what primary key is so primary key is the id of the table so say for example if i have a table which is supplier within the supplier one key which reference that this is my row and it, the key of that row is always called as primary key so that's what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm saying constraint supplier underscore PK which just stands for primary key and then I'm just like typing primary key as supplier ID so that means this table primary key is supplier ID so you can always see when, whenever you open the table and whenever you're looking at the DDL design you'll always find this key symbol in front of one of the columns which means that that's your primary key for that column now I know you might have also heard a term foreign key so for an example if I have two tables supplier and then I have also another table which is say for example customer so supplier has a primary key which is supplier ID now this supplier has sold something to this customer which again sits in the customer table so customer table also has a primary key which is customer ID but then it would also have a foreign key which is supplier ID because that links these two tables together which means a supplier ID for this table was primary key for that table but similar way supplier ID also exists in customer tables so we can join these two tables that's why supplier ID in that table is a foreign key and similar way the table itself has its own primary key as well which is customer ID so I hope that kind of clears out really basic understanding of what is uh, primary key and what is foreign key I know a lot of people kind of like uh, struggle with these kind of terms okay what is foreign key and what is primary key but again to be honest if you just understand the logic behind that these are the keys that are used to kind of like join tables with each other that's pretty much what you want to know but again this is kind of like basic understanding on that so what we are going to do is we have created this table similar way i'm going to just mock up another table which is a customer table so uh, i'll just give certain values again to that table and as you can see in the end once i have built my columns customer id customer name contact number supplier id supplier name uh, contact name and supply date and state and customer rep so we have all these new columns in that um, but I'm trying to do is then constraint customer underscore primary key is my customer ID as I explained and then I also have my uh, foreign key which is constraint FK underscore supplier foreign key is supplier ID and reference is supplier which is the table so references again will be referring to the actual table itself so which is my supplier table and then within that I have another column which is supplier ID which is the, the primary key of the supplier table so that will be used as foreign key in this table so customer table is also created as well. So before we move to the insert statement, I actually want to kind of like cover uh, the drop statement as well, because if I drop some table, I'm going to recreate the same table again. So in this, you can see the statement is quite simple, which is drop table customer. Once I run that, that just says table customer is dropped. So once your table is dropped, I'm going to actually recreate it again as well, because I do want to use it for other examples. So I'll recreate it back again. But this is how you easily just drop your tables if you have created something wrong that you don't want. But be really careful with this because you are dropping the actual uh, integrity of the whole table and you're dropping all the data as well with it. So be really careful kind of like using these commands. If, you, if you're kind of like new to SQL, I'll always re recommend you to kind of like create your own tables and play with those tables rather than actually moving to the database table in the first place. First, really get used to these statements and play the, with them while creating your own tables and play on those first.
I'll be leaving all these code like which I have kind of covered in this example on my repository itself from GitHub so you can actually take that and use that as an example and kind of like play around more with it by changing things into it. So the next we are going to do is we're actually going to insert values in this table. So as you can see insert command is quite uh, simple as well where you just you insert into supplier which is the name of my table and I'm going to actually refer all the column names here which is all my column names in an order to actually see like these are my first two last columns. Once I do that and I'm going to say values against those columns which is again within the same order as I have mentioned the column names. So 5000 which is an integer value goes into uh, my supplier ID then Apple is my supplier name contact uh, name is APL then my supply date I'm just giving as first of January 2018 and uh, the state itself is California customer wrap is Michael. So say for an example, this is the way I have created this table. So now I'm going to copy paste another code again. These are really basic codes. That's the only reason I'm just copy pasting them is it says just to insert statements to actually insert uh, the value of the, the rows itself, which I've created initially before this video. So I don't really waste your time typing these code in. So next thing what I'm going to do is insert all again within the customer table because I want to create some examples where I'm joining a customer table with the supplier table. So that's why I'm just inserting some sort of values in them, which is again your data markup language in which you are inserting the values. Basically you can say as an example you are inserting data into your tables. So once I run that you can see there's nine rows are inserted into customer table as well. Perfect. So next we are going to move into selecting uh, the data which is again a part of data markup language where in this select statement what I want to do is I want to select the table so actually I can see that table in my console. So there's two ways you can select it. One in which you can actually say the name of all the columns so that you can say select name of all the columns from and the table name. So you can actually do it this way which is a long way but I do use sometimes a really short form of that which means you can actually say select star which is again asterisk sign and from the table name which actually selects all the values in the table for all the columns. So you can use either way you can actually give all the column names or if you're in a hurry you can just say select star from and the table name itself. Once you do that and once I run both of the commands you can see in the below window I can actually see all my 11 values that have been inserted into the table and I can see them on my console window. Similar way when if I run them by all the column names as you can see all the column names are visible. Now these are the different tables so I'm using the, the second one with the example of customer table and the first one as a supplier. So you can see I can select both of the tables in both ways. So next we are going to look at is update. Within update I'm actually going to update a certain value of the row depending on some logic behind it. So say for an example I'm going to just draw, draw it on for you. So we're, I'm updating the customer table and I'm basically saying set supply date because I'm changing the supply date I want to set supply date to a certain value where I can actually sort of set it to as a sys date which means today's date but in this case I'm going to actually give it a value where it's 1st of December 2018 and contact name I want to set it as Audi and where customer ID so that's where the where clause comes in where what I'm trying to say is change the value of the, the contact name and change the value of supply date where the customer ID is equal to 16,000. So that's kind of like the simple statement where I'm changing a certain value when I'm selecting it for a specific customer ID. So in this example for 16,000, I'm changing the value of these two columns and I'm going to be setting this value in there. So once I run this command, that just says one row has been updated. So once we, so these are kind of like really basic statements. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I want to just kind of like clear a couple of logics, how you create a table, how you update them, how you delete them. So we kind of like have touched upon it. So if you're starting as a beginner, you'd know these kind of like certain commands that you can actually run. Again, you can take this code, play around with it and do more examples. And once you are really used to them, then you can move on to the next level again. And then you can rewatch this video. If you want to kind of pause it here, go back and try these statements yourself and then come back and look at the other statements. You can do that as well. So next we are going to move on is with delete statement. Again, it's still part of data markup language where we are deleting a certain value with again, the same way we have used update statement where we are using where class with it, but the delete statement as well will be using the where class to delete a certain value where column is specific value. In this, what I'm trying to do is I'm saying delete from supplier where the supplier ID is equal to 11,000. Now this is really basic where I'm just saying, look, delete this value from the table wherever the supplier ID is this. 
So once I actually delete that and I'm actually going to go back to my supplier table and I'm actually going to say um, select star my supplier again just to see the value. So as you can see there was a column which was supplier ID 11,000 that's just been deleted from the table itself. So next in this statement again I'm going to be deleting it again but within that delete we have used where clause but now I'll show you an example where you can actually use and clause as well with the where clause. So with this example what we are doing is we're doing delete from supplier where supplier name is equal to docker and supplier ID is greater than 10,000. Okay, we have already looked at two versions of how to delete. Now I want to kind of show one more version of delete statement itself. So within delete statement, what I want to do is I want to delete something in the table supplier basis of if there is something that I'm actually looking at within the table customer or even if you can call it as if supplier ID exists in the table supplier and table uh, supplier ID also exists in the table customer I only want to delete if they're equal to each other so in this example I'm actually going to show you now which is we're doing delete from supplier where not exist is another statement that I will be using in this where if it doesn't exist and I'm going to start these brackets and I'll say select star from customer where supplier dot supplier is again the reference of the supplier table supplier dot supplier ID is equal to customer dot supplier ID it just deletes the row which is kind of like the supplier ID is same in both tables so we're deleting that row itself let's look at another example of select we are going we have looked at before really basic example of how to select uh, the, the data from the table itself but in this example I'm actually going to bring a couple of different variations of it so we are looking at uh, select with where clause select with like clause so we kind of like cover what me what is where is doing what a like is doing so we'll cover all these different ones as well just so we know exactly where we are heading at. So next what I'm going to do is select star from supplier where supplier name is like so say for an example I don't really exactly know the supplier name so what I'm going to say is uh, the name is like KAG and I'm going to put percentage sign which means I'm not really sure what's the rest of the name but I really want to search all the names that start with KAG. Similar way if you know the last three you can put the percentage sign in the front and you can say for an example GLE in the end that will pick up this column still. So this is kind of like an example how you actually search maybe certain names in your database where you know the first three letters but you don't really know uh, you don't really know the rest of the parts of the name which you want to see how many different variations of that name is existing in the database you can do it in this way. So that's one way of to using the select statement. Next we want to cover something like order by. Again, I would still recommend the same thing, I know, because I'm kind of like going through different variations of statement. If you want to take a pause here and you want to kind of like take that SQL code uh, from the GitHub repository, basically pull down that code and kind of like start playing around with it and run these commands, change certain values in the commands and use that before moving ahead because we will just keep getting more further into the logic. We'll be using different types of statements, so if you want to take a pause here, go back and actually run those commands and maybe change the commands and run them and then come back and do more and basically look at another statement in this. So next we're going to look at is another variations where I'm going to use order by statement now. So in this I'm doing select supplier ID, contact name, supplier name from supplier table and I'm also going to select where uh, supplier ID is less than equal to 5000 so anything which is also 5000 and less than 5000 and supply date is less than equal to 1st of June 18. So once I do that, I'm actually going to now put my order by statement after this. So I want to select all the data, but I actually want to uh, see in the console in ordered in a specific format that I want to see it as. So I'm going to say order by supplier ID and also by supply date. And once I do that, now if I don't really put anything after that, that means it's going to order it in an ascending order, which is a default order. But if I actually want to start, do that it into a descending order, I can just say in the end DESC, which means descending order. Once I do that, it will just basically order them in a descending order and only show these three names. And again, it's by uh, supplier ID and supply date. So this is how you use your order by statement. 
So we have covered like a lot of basic statements, we have covered DDL, DML, and now we have covered a lot of different logic. Now one thing that is really important to know within SQL is joins. So let's cover now SQL joins. Again, SQL joins are really critical. So again, at this stage, if you have practiced all your statements, now we'll kind of like begin understanding of what are joins and how do you actually use joins in which you have your values in table A. How do you actually join that with values in table B? Similarly, where we have touched up on a primary key of this table also exists in the primary key of the other table and then you have that key as the foreign key which again we have kind of like covered in the start of this video so I'm going to actually jump on to this image where we are talking about different joins so the first one as you can see within the image is your left join so left join is where you have your table A and table B and as you can see your dark highlighted area is the area where this is the data that you're selecting within the left join which means anything that's equal to each other which means that this ID exists in table A and table B as well and also any values that exist in only in table A which means it's a left join and if it's a right join, similarly on the right hand, you can see where you have your values from table B and then also values that are equivalent in both of them. So which means you have all the intersection values and you also have values if that's in the right because it's a right join. Similarly, you have your inner join now where you're not really doing any left or right, you're doing only inner join, which is again, your values are equal in both the table. So next is full join again. Uh, when we're using the syntax, they're usually classed as union join where you say union or union all. We'll go into the example when we're looking at the syntax, but full join, the idea is anything that's equal in both the tables, any IDs, and then anything that's in the left table or the right table, which is table A and table B. So that's your full join. You can actually extend the right and left join as well, similar way where you, you can actually say that the key of the second table is null, in which you are not really selecting anything within the inner join, so which is equal ID between both the tables, you're not selecting them, you're only selecting the values which is only existing in half side of the table, so it's kind of like you're selecting the outer join. So these are like different types of joins, so we want to cover all of them, but if I really want to kind of like explain to you like what joins you would usually be working as if you're working in this field is usually you would work a lot more on inner joins, you would work a lot on left and right joints and you would sometimes use full joints as well it, it might be some of the cases you actually want to do that as well but usually uh, like if I'm talking myself I usually tend to bring most of the data where I'm actually working on a specific model I would bring most of the data and then I'll be playing around with that data if I really want to exclude that data I would do that in maybe Python or R code where actually if I do want to run some more analysis I don't really have to go back and change my SQL code I can actually just change that clause in within my Python code or within my R code so we have covered all the joints now so let's look at the syntax of these joints so first we are going to look at full joints where within the full join the syntax is usually use union join so within that we are actually going to say select supplier ID from supplier union select supplier ID from customer so yeah as you can see we're selecting different tables now we have selected a uh, supplier table and we have selected the customer table and anything that has equal supplier ID now because it's a union join that means even if they are not equal they would still be showed in the, the table itself so once I run this code as you can see all the IDs are now shown in this table. Now again, we have another version of this where what I'm going to do is you can actually use where, where clause within your joints as well. There's no uh, reason why can't you actually just join certain values between those two tables. So within this, what I'm going to do in this version is select supplier name from supplier where lower, uh, so lower is another statement that would be good to know now. So lower means that you are actually uh, all the values within the table. So if it's in names or in this case, it may have supplier names. So if it's Kaggle or if it's any sort of name and it has a capital A, so I'm just turning all the values in that as lowercase. Similarly, if you say upper, that will turn all the values as uppercase. So after doing the lower, what I'm doing is I'm using live statement where I'm not really sure about the name, but I know it's star, it has O in it. Either it could be in the middle or it could be in the start, so I'm saying percentage O percentage, where I'm just saying union join then, select supplier name from customer table, and where I'm still again doing the lower case in this as well, supplier name like O. And what I wanted to kind of like do is order by one. Now order by one basically is a short form of rather than actually naming it as a column name, I could just say the column name in which uh, I'm basically just saying order by supplier ID. I could actually say order by supplier ID instead of saying one. I'm just selecting one as it's the first column. All right, so let's look at now uh, inner join. Within inner join, what we are trying to do is we are trying to select all the values that are equal in table A and table B. So in our case, it is supplier table and customer table. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to select the values that are equal in both the tables, and that's a value for supplier ID. So in this case, we are saying select star from supplier table. And as you can see, I've mentioned this SP in it. Now, usually you can use these as a reference of the table. So whenever you are joining on the bottom, uh, you don't really have to say on supplier dot supplier ID 
you can actually just say sp.supplier ID because you have given that table a reference now, which is sp. So instead of giving the whole name again and again, if your table name is large enough, you just want to maybe leave it as letters. You can just say sp, ac, and these are, it doesn't really matter if I change sp to sc or whatever, but it will still work. It's just a reference given to that table name. So what I'm doing is supplier is SP, inner join. So it is just a reference of the table, so it doesn't really matter what type of name you select for this reference. You can just say SP, CT, or you want to change it to CC, it doesn't really matter. So once I do inner join, customer CT on. Now I don't really have to name the table again because I've given the reference to that table. So I can just say SP.supplier ID equal to CT.supplier ID. And once I run that, now that only brings all the values because as you can see, I have set asterisk sign on the start, which is select star from the table where you're basically selecting all the values of the, basically means all the columns, not really a certain value. So in this case, as you can see, all the values are now visible, which is an inner join between both the tables. So these are the matched values. And as you can see, all the rows, uh, so the, 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 the basically columns has increased in size because we have joined two tables now and we know exactly the values of both the tables. And as you can see in one row now. So this is kind of like a usual practice that you would be doing if you're running models and you have some features in one table, some features in the second table. You don't want to join them to bring them all together in one row. So you can build a model on one table rather than building it on two tables. So the next we are going to look at is the left join. So left join where we are looking at all the values within the, the left table, which is in the, in our case, is the first table is referenced to the table which is on the left. And the second table we are joining to is always referred to the table on the right. So if you say right join, you're selecting the second table. If you're saying left join, you're selecting the first table. So in this case, I'm doing select star supplier. Again, I'm going to give the reference as SP. Left join customer CT, which is a reference of the second table on sp.supplier id is equal to ct.supplier id in which we are joining these two tables but as i have said left join that means i'm selecting the first table so which means anything that equal in both the tables as we have mentioned in our join before and anything that's actually there in the left table which doesn't really exist in the right table but we'll still select them as well so that's why it's a left join Similarly, if I have to mock up the example for a right join to cover them as well, which is the next star from supplier ID, I just change the key from left join to right join. Customer CT on sp.supplier ID is equal to ct.supplier ID. Now, exact same bit, we are, we are joining anything that's equal in both the tables and anything that's there in the right table. Now, if I do want to create them as outer joins, I don't really want to select the values that are equal in this. So you can actually reflect back to that image I showed. If you want to actually create within those joins, if you want to extend them to actually just the outer joins, not really equal joins, what you can actually do is you can say the values is null. So say for an example, in our first example, left uh, left join itself. So you can just say where ct.supplier ID is null. That means we didn't really find that value in the second table. So anything that's null, just only show me those values. So which way you can actually extend your left or right join, the join, you can actually just look at the data on the table itself which is on the outer side of the circle not really anything that's equal join in both the tables so I hope this kind of like clears out thing. I know joins can, could be complicated in some shape or form. So what would be the good practice here would be to actually go back and run some examples yourself and try to do different variations of join and get really hands-on practice on them. Because I think if you have to kind of like work with SQL, I think joins are the majority of the time you will be using them. Uh, to be honest, if you're working on DDL, DML statement, you don't really tend to use them that much. You might use them when you're creating the pipeline or creating the table in the first place or maybe changing some values in the table, which is a rare case scenario because the data is all there you don't really tend to go back and change data but yeah it's good to know that's why we have covered those because if some reason you are creating your own tables and you want to manage those tables you know you should know how to actually update those tables and how to truncate or delete those tables so we have kind of like covered our joins we have covered a lot of dml and ddl statements now and now we will be looking at two really advanced use cases where we are actually going to look at different uh, types of way or variations you can actually form your data into so in this example i do run some couple of statements on the background to actually insert more data to actually reflect uh, things but when you were looking at the final version of the code you would have those insert statements as well if you do want to run them after all in the end to actually get same values or same results as mine you can actually use that code and because again all the code examples will be there so I'm just extending that but I'm only covering only the, the actual code part itself in this video to actually refer those in this video and if you want to kind of like update those insert commands they are also available within the code once you basically pull that code from GitHub. So first example of this use case what we are trying to do is you would have run pivot commands in Excel so how to actually run pivot commands in SQL. So this is what we're going to cover in the next example. So in this, let's start. We will be doing select uh, sp.supplier, sp state from supplier. And again, I'm giving the reference, which is sp. Left join, again, as you can see, I'm only doing left join here. So which means I'm only selecting the values that are equal in both and also the values which are in the left side of the table, which is the table, first one, which is the supplier table. So uh, which is my uh, supplier ID 
then I'm joining them and I'm saying on SP data supplier ID and CT data supplier ID. And I'm going to actually put this code into a bracket. The whole code is gone in the brackets now. And then I'm actually going to say select star from, and I'm going to do with this pivot. And I'm going to put another bracket and I'm going to say count. So count we haven't covered yet. So count is something like you're counting a specific column values. So in this case, we're saying count supplier ID. So which means I'm counting the supplier IDs that are there. So I'm not really referring to the exact supplier ID, but I'm referring to the count. So if it's a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, they'll be counted in three values. So in this case, I'm going to say count supplier ID and I'm going to refer for state in and I'm actually going to give these values in, which is California as CA, United States as UN, Sweden as SD, Scotland as SC. And I'm going to close the brackets. And once I run this, as you can see, it gives my names, which is I have selected CA, UN, SD and SC, which was a name I've given to those values and the supplier ID. So that means what we're trying to do is we're selecting different states and within those states, what we're trying to do is we're trying to see how many suppliers we have in those states. So we are just pivoting them out. Similar example that you would do in Excel as well, where you look at your raw uh, data and you're trying to put them into a pivot format. So in this case, we have just pivoted them and we have looked at the values, which is now within the same example, if I'm actually selecting the states, what I want to also use is I want to actually add on my uh, supplier names as well. What I can actually do within the same command, I don't really have to put them into anywhere else except just selecting them as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put supplier name into it. And as you can see, my pivot has extended where um, the, the, the states are there and then you have your supplier names. And similar way, if you keep adding on more columns, it will just be forming into another column format and you will be counting against that. So I think that's a really good example to actually work on with your pivots. You don't really have to extract the data from SQL. A lot of times I've seen people actually extracting the data from uh, SQL itself to actually put them in Excel so they can pivot. But you can actually do use pivot command within SQL as well to actually see how can you actually extend the data and you can use these column names and you can get the values, which is your values that are existing in uh, depending on if you're counting by state or counting by agents or whatever. So that was our first use case. Now the next use case what I want to cover is row number function. Again, this is a new function again. So within this example, as you can see what I'm drawing do is I'm doing select ct.star where I'm actually using the reference of the table because I don't want to select all the columns in supplier table. I do want to select all the columns in customer table. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just saying ct.star select everything that's there in the customer table. Then I'm going to actually use this row number which is row underscore number function. It's basically used uh, so to actually count the rows dependent on your logic which is what I'm trying to do is over uh, bracket star partition by ct.customer name CT dot contact number and then order it by as well CT dot supply date and I actually want to really don't want to do default order which is ascending I want to say descending to order it by descending order and I want to name this column as row ID then I'm going to say from supplier which my reference is SP inner join a customer a CT on SP dot supplier ID. So I'm joining them as an inner join, so all the equal join values. And then within that, I'm actually going to put that into one table, which is table one. And I'm going to really use another select statement afterward, which is select a customer name, customer number, and my row ID from the bracket. So bracket means that I'm using within that table itself. Now, why I'm doing is because uh, the row ID is the new column that actually is running that logic within that. So I, when I'm drawing into another, so I have to kind of like bring them into another subquery. So I'm actually bringing, bringing in another select statement and I'm putting this code into the subquery of that. So actually I can select that row ID value. So as you can see within the bottom of that, I'm only selecting anything that is row ID is equal to one. So let's see an example of one. So once I run that, as you can see, it has selected all the values, which has one row ID, which means, so it has partitioned them by name by contact number and by row ID, row ID which refers to one in each because we have selected one. But what I'm going to actually show you as an example, I'm actually going to uncomment that out, which is by double dash. Run that again and then as you can see there is Glenn in this database which is twice in this table but I don't want to count him as twice so what I've done with this example is I've actually deduped them so I have removed all the duplicates by doing this where I have selected row number function and I have said actually partition them by customer name and partition them by contact number and order them by the supply date so the most recent entry that has came into the database that's what I'm doing descending order and I'm actually saying where row ID is equal to one that means I'll be having the recent contact information on Glenn which is in the database itself. This last use case which is quite similar to row number function but instead of row number function I'm actually going to use rank so similar example again where we are doing the exact same which is 
So as you can see, I'm doing again uh, select SP dot customer rep, SP dot salary, SP dot state, and I'm actually doing the same row number function again. So once I've applied row number from supplier, put them into the brackets, which is I'm referencing that as table one. Then I run another select star, which is select table one dot star from this table where I say where table one, which is a reference of the whole subquery, and I'm saying the row ID is equal to one, which means give me all the unique values. Once I've done that, now actually what I want to do is I want to apply a rank on this function, which is my this table, which is a recent output as you can see in the console window. So what I want to do is I want to actually do put them into another brackets, give it another reference. I'm going to just say SPP. So I'm going to do SPP.CustomerRep, SPP.Salary. Now I'm actually going to apply a rank function on this. Rank or partition by SPP.State. And the way I want to order it is by salary itself. So once I do that, I'm actually going to call it as rank. And I'm going to, actually I'm going to also make it more complex. I'm actually going to use where clause on this. I'm going to say where SPP.State is equal to California. So for, for this example, again, as you can see, the data it wasn't there for the salary account itself, but I've included that in my insert statement. So when I give you the full version of the code, you would have these so you could run them before actually running the example itself. So you can add on your salaries, actually. So what I'm doing is I'm updating a new column. I'm altering the table. I'm adding a salary column. And within that salary column value, I'm actually giving the value of salary for each of the columns that are there in the table. Once I do that, now in this example, I've selected it for California and have ranked them in order of salary. Now, as you can see, it's an ascending order because I haven't really selected order by um, descending so that means it will be ordering them in an ascending order and as you can see all the customer wrap names are there and their salaries are present in ascending order. Now we have covered all the basics of SQL and while there are many types of different databases like MySQL, Microsoft, SQL Server and PL SQL as we discussed before most of them speak SQL so what we are going to now show in as an example is how to integrate SQL into your Python code. And again, as we have covered all the basics, so we can just use those commands, but we can actually interact with those commands within our Python code as well. So say for an example, in this example, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use SQLite uh, package within Python, where I'm trying to build first my connection. And once I have made the connection with my database, I'm basically creating that cursor and which cursor then will be used to actually execute that SQL command. So then once we have defined our cursor, we basically give the SQL command, which is SQL command is equal to the exact code, which is of create table. Now it would be exactly the same if you're trying to insert new records or if you're trying to fetch new records, you'll be providing your SQL code in this way. Once you have done that, then you'll be executing the command by basically selecting your cursor dot execute the SQL command. So within this, we also show an example. Once we have created the table, we create another SQL command where we are inserting the values now. And then the same way we do cursor.execute SQL command where we are actually inserting that row in our database in the table. Similarly, in the next example, we're trying to insert another command within our database. And finally, to save that records when you're working with the database, whenever you insert new row, you do have to click on that commit sign. And as we have committed before in our database, what we are going to do now is we're just going to say connection.commit, which actually commits the value and updates that into the database. And finally, once we have done the commit, we just close the connection. Now in the next example, we're again loading the SQLite package. First, we're building the connection between our database. Once that is done, we are creating the cursor, same way we did before, in which we are creating the connection.cursor. Now this is another way of executing the command where we are not really defining the SQL code first, we are actually executing it while we are saying select star from employee table. In this example, again, this is we have covered in basics where we were talking about how to use a DML statements and in which we have also covered select statements. So this is how we are just selecting the table in our database and then we are creating new variable called ANS, which is answer is equal to cursor dot fetch all where we are actually fetching all the information that is there in that table. Table. Once we do that, it's basically loading the information into the ANS variable. And then finally, we just print the variable ANS. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting in terms of really uh, getting from the beginner level where we have a good understanding of all the types of statements are there, moving on to words, what types of joints are there, and actually touching upon each different levels of joints and how to use them, and also moving on to the high level use cases where we did another uh, row number functions and use rank functions and also looked at how to pivot, which you actually can do in Excel as well, so how to do it within SQL without moving the data out of SQL. So we kind of like cover these different 
different types of use cases and I hope you found this video interesting and you learned something out of this. If you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel as well. I do create videos every week and uh, so you will basically get that notification as well when I create new videos so click on that bell sign as well and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.